it up, it might fall down. It might fall down. So you still not gonna tell me who you are in my comments? You just gonna be a creepy stalker? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give it, three is my favorite number. I'm gonna give it one more minute till it gets to three because I gotta do one more thing off the screen and I'll be right back. Oh, there goes the Instagram live. I just heard my phone fall. No, don't leave the page. Oh, I'm killing the phone. <laughs> I swear, y'all, I'm going to have this together one day. I should have believed we was going to be doing all of this streaming for life when everybody was figuring it out. No! Fuck! My bad. I forgot this was still on. While I was trying to set you up, I messed the computer up. So now I'm trying to redo the Facebook Live. And we can get back to reading the Willie Lynch letter and the making of a slave. <coughs> or not, because the computer is taking a second. So let me find my way to the page that we're talking about today, which is aha, the breaking process. Nope, don't need Spotify. That's, you know, that's probably what holds it up. Okay. So I apologize. I'm talking to myself anyway. I don't see that there's anybody listening. Um, I don't think those things be accurate either all the time. Ugh, I need a new computer, y'all. My technology can't keep up with the ever-changing technology. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, please restore my last session. So, I am Thug. Ia, the original Thug. OG Thug. Um, mm, mm, mm. Oh, I gotta get better at this. Oh my gosh, I'm always the worst with this streaming stuff. I gotta get better. So much better. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, is it still on? What? How'd that work? For real? Man, that'd be amazing if the Facebook, even though the computer shut down, the um the joint kept going. That would be oh nope, that's not what happened. I don't know what this stream key is, but I'm gonna have to stop it. Do 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 you can't use this option. Hmm. Interesting. All right, well, I'm going to stop it and start it over. Since uh, I'm talking to myself and there is no one to talk to, people ask me why I do what I do. I talk to myself because there is no one to talk to. People ask me why I do what I do, so call me crazy. 
Oh, that's not the same song, is it? I really don't care. <laughs> that's my prerogative. Yeah, well, Thug Hippie Remix. That's that's how we do that. That worked, though, didn't it? I should be a DJ. I, I was going to be a DJ in another life, but my attention span isn't good enough because I'm a dancer, first and foremost. And I get to dancing and forget I need to put the needle on the record. <laughs> Ugh. Y'all should talk to yourself. It's actually real awesome. You should talk to yourself and answer. <laughs> oh, they say that's the real definition of crazy. Oh no. They won't let me go back to my um they won't let me set up a new live video. That Kinda sucks. Kinda sucks, kinda sucks. Let's see, let's try it again. Yeah, there we go. There we go. See, I'm always messing up. What I have learned is to copy and copy my stuff because I'm always end up having to retype it. Boom. All right, y'all. Almost, almost, oh, freaking most. I'm not going to even care about all that other stuff. Whatever happens, happens. And three, two, one. Here we go again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Let's try this again. It's always in this corner. The last time it didn't work right, it was in this corner. Um, when I was sitting over there, it was perfect. So anyway, let me jump right in this quick introduction. Because, uh, oh, ding. Let me let the ding happen. Uh, uh, nobody joins me anyway till later. Y'all watch it when you want to watch it. That's cool. I just wish y'all would comment. You know what I'm saying? Let me let ha be mad. Be happy, be inquisitive, tell me something, say something. Shut up, Ia, you talk too much, make the reading shorter. Like, give me some some feedback on what's happening. Um, I'm, I'm glad I enjoy talking to myself. Uh, <laughs> that that makes it a lot uh, easier. I've, I've learned to talk to myself. Thank y'all. Hey, Chelsea! Thank you, appreciate you, girl. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm Ia, the holistic artist, um, moving, I keep saying that, I'm so used to saying that, but I'm moving into being the thug, hippie, trauma healing, urban guru, cause I am focusing on, um, healing the urban world, and in this justice work, I need to be a little more real than I already am, um, I need to talk, talk about talking truth to power, I'm finna say some things. So, um, I, I need to be more of a thug hippie so people understand that there's a hard edge to this. One, so you stop treating me like I'm some cotton candy, uh, some old simp. And two, so that you know that I'm, I'm, I'm not here for the BS, right? So, what we talked about last week, <clears throat> and the hippie part is because there's a whole lot of peace, but do know I'll give you a holistic whooping if you step out of line. Um, or so I can put you in line as in the case of reading the dang this opposite day. Oh, look, and it's the right way over there. I'm sorry. I got my Instagram over there and the words are backwards. Anyway, reading the Willie Lynch letter in the making of a slave. So I will recap what we have talked about. Um, only the last, last chapter or what you missed. Feel free to run it back and find the first one. This is only the third one. And there are two more. Uh, two more Tuesdays, two more Thursdays of this. So what we talked about last week is um, as we move forward, everyone must learn the difference between being a pacifier and a sustainer. Uh, there's a lot of people, organizations, and I'm, I'm not saying their heart's not in it. They they mean all of the good intention of the world, right? They mean they mean all of the good goodness and all the love, light, power, prayer. They really have a good intention, but 
are you pacifying the situation or are you actually sustaining the situation? And when you're pacifying the situation, it looks like stuff is working. People are happy. You're getting what you want. The people you're serving are getting what they want. But if you pulled yourself out of the picture, what would happen? Could they sustain themselves? That's the difference between being pacifying and sustaining. If you took yourself away, would the work continue? Would the growth continue? And so if you have an organization, I encourage you to make sure that is part of your vision, your mission, and your movement and your activation. That you are actually sustaining, which means you're leaving, which means you have no ego in this because you're ready to go. You're you're trying to set up camp and sustain them and go on about your way. That's the difference in being pacifying or sustaining. The concept of breaking black people came from the same way in which you break a horse. They literally came up with the way to make slaves by using the same principles they use in breaking a horse. So there you have the mindset letting you know already we ain't nothing but animals because you use the way you break one animal to break another animal. And that was the way of of breaking horses. And what that was, was to break a horse from their natural state because horses weren't originally domesticated. They were wild and free. And you break them from one state of life to another. And so over time, these horses did become domesticated. They did want to plow our fields. They did want us to ride their back after generations of beating that out of them and domesticating docile animals as they continue to breed out the aggressive animal. That is the same principle they used for slaves. Break the stream of independence so that they will only be dependent on you. So that's like disrupting the black family. And I'll tie the two of those of the breaking of the horse and disrupting of the black family with this next statement. Uh, where'd it go? Mm, Break from the mental. Oh yeah. Break from their natural state in nature from one form of life to another. And of course it's going to take a little more mental. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep the body. These are the exact words. This is an exact quote. Keep the body, break the mind. Keep the body and break the mind. And so the relationship that I made to that or to bring it up to date because people have, oh, well, that was written so long ago. What is that? Da, da, da. Yo, no, it's still relevant. This was written 309 years ago. And this is the mental state that keeps the black community the way it is. And this is the mental state that keeps systematic racism the way it is. It was written over 300 years ago. And it works because they have broken the mind and kept our bodies. We were allowed to play sports, but we still had to walk through the back door to drink water and use our own water fountain. Wait a minute. We were allowed to play sports, but still weren't even able to go to certain cities because they were just so hell bent on not having black people wherever they were that we, we couldn't even we couldn't even play sports in your town where other towns would let us play sports. And, you know, at least we could go through the back door and and drink out of our special fountain. So I I don't know. To me, that sounds like a keeping of the body and a breaking of the mind. And if you see in sports, it's still that way. Sports are dominated by our culture. But how are we treated outside of sports, outside of the things that entertain you? Because you broke the mind, but you kept that body. You know what I'm saying? So... In order to do that, you find the king of the hill and take him down and beat him within an inch of his life. Don't kill him because you need to keep him to make an example. Because, see, if you were to take the biggest, baddest one and kill him, eh, that doesn't really say anything. That's not really threatening. You just took the biggest, you didn't see a fight be put up. So there's nothing really to make the next biggest, baddest nigga, and that's what they said, biggest, baddest nigga, come and try to challenge you so what we gonna do is in front of the women in front of the children in front of the other men we gonna take the biggest baddest nigga meanest one 
and beat him within an inch of his life. Put the fear of God in him. It's in the book. That's what it says. Direct quote. So that he is a perfect example that you docile him down so much that they see him in that field bowing to the slave owner and they like, well, shit. If they got that nigga, I, what chance do I got? I'm okay. What y'all need me to do? Like, honestly, like, well, I, well, shoot, if they got him and he ain't putting up a fight no more, what chance do I have? So I don't want to take the biggest, baddest one and kill him. That's not useful. I need to take the biggest, baddest one and make an example out of him. That's what we need to do. And then, my bad. Hold on, Instagram. And then I need to do it in front of everybody. I need to do it in front of everybody. Okay. So let me go ahead. <sighs> so that's pretty much it. And then, you know, after you separate him, then go work on the woman and soften her up. They didn't take women off the break and start beating them. What they did was, let me go test her personality. 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 <laughs> Why can I say that? Let me go test her personality and see if she's already docile and submissive and will just walk on into slavery or am I going to have to kind of, you know, am I going to have to beat it out of her too, some type of way? Okay. And then, so once we have this docile woman, she going to have the kids. And she's going to raise these docile children and lead them right into slavery. And eventually, if we keep breeding these docile men with these docile women, generation after generation, we'll have these black children that have no idea that slavery ain't natural. But it ain't natural. And that's why there were uprisings, because it just don't feel right inside of you if <laughs> you like actually try to be human you know what i'm saying like it, it, slavery shouldn't feel right inside you treating somebody different because of a color shouldn't th that's like common sense that should should not have to to be told to anybody but unfortunately there's miseducation on all sides black white yellow green brown whatever color race you want to call yourself we've all been miseducated about each other it ain't just black and white you know what I'm saying? Of course, everybody's been miseducated about black people. We don't know no real education about white folks, you know, and we don't know about other races and cultures at all, period, in, in America, for real. Then we don't learn about nobody else. So we all have been miseducated, and that miseducation is what's hurting us because we lack an understanding of each other, and we lack of understanding of how our mindsets are the way they are. Oh, I might not end up reading today. This recap. Um, so black people were termed uncivilized niggas. That's a real quote. Black people were termed uncivilized niggas just for not being a slave. We could have been doctors, lawyers, scientists, whatever. But because we weren't slaves, White people taught other white people that that meant we were uncivilized. And when you say something is uncivilized, that means it is wild and untamed. Excuse me. When really the original reason we were called uncivilized was because we weren't slaves. It had nothing to do with our intelligence. <sighs> and they had to write it down so that when their legacies because they could already see that the usage of horses and having to train them were being phased out. They didn't want their legacy not to understand the correlation of how to train black people. So they wrote it down because it wasn't just about having a slave. They did not want to lose a financial entity. We was big money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We was making the money and being sold for money. We was big stock. And they didn't want to lose that. So they wanted to make sure you understood how to keep your bankroll. It was all about money. and yeah, nothing to do with nothing else at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So in order for any of this to change, we all have to take accountability for why it is still happening. This was written so long ago. How much stuff would you keep doing for 300 years and not change it? You know, that doesn't make any sense. How long do you keep doing something wrong to yourself? Be like, okay, wait, hold on. I can't, you know, I, I gained a couple, I, if I gain a few pounds, 
Like right now, I'm like, oh, let me let me go to the gym. I just rejoined Planet Fitness. You know, I'm not gonna keep like, oh well, I gained a few pounds. It, you know, that's that's same concept. So we have to change our mindsets. We have to take accountability on why this thing can still work. And that's all of the, the things that we have to change in our mindset. White people have to understand their role and how they're doing it. And it ain't white people, black people. Black people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We all we need and we have to change and we have to believe that we are all we need and get out of the internalized racism of the hair color. And now not only, I mean, not hair color, hair texture. I was just talking to another friend. Okay, so I have this good hair that has been part of the black community forever. And now my good hair has a number. Oh, wait, no, I have natural hair, not nappy hair. So now not only is natural hair acceptable, but now there's a fight between natural and nappy. Y'all just messed up the whole damn thing. It should just be hair that is relaxed, not permed. So let's get that right. Permed hair makes curls. Relaxed hair makes it straight. Black people get their hair relaxed because we already got the curl. If you want to be technical. Anyway. Now we have a fight between nappy and natural hair. When before it was just she got good hair and whatever else you got. Now we got a fight between if it's nappy or natural. And is it 4A, B, C, 3A? Like what the, what? So that is internalized racism. That is perpetuating the system. It don't matter. Why why do we even care what our hair is doing? Why don't you care how I'm treating you? Stop asking me what number my hair is. When my hair was long and wavy, ooh, what number is that? Whatever number grew out my head. You know what I'm saying? And then people mad because you think I'm holding back some information. Ooh, what product you use? DNA? Ooh, where I can get it that? Out your mama and daddy. Like, I don't know what to tell you. But these are internalized racism things that black people do that y'all need to stop. Dark skin, light skin. Cut it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cut, cut all that out. House nigga feel nigga? Dark skin, light skin. You're keeping all of this going. Oh, other side. Anyway, let me read white folks I tell about you, you later and how your uh, privileged racism is, is affecting us, but again, it is the pawn of the game that needs to change direction because the system is doing exactly what it was built to do. It ain't nothing wrong with it, so it is quicker to change the pawns of the game if y'all really ready. And anybody that's really ready to help us do that, then I can also show you how to use the power that you have at this present moment to change the game. But you have to be ready and it might be hard work. You might have to talk to your family. You might have to first deal with yourself, you know, and that's the hardest part. Anyway, how, oh, we're 16 minutes in. Okay. How I'm doing, Chelsea? You still here? <sighs> we all got work to do. We all got work to do. Yep. So the breaking process of the African woman. Then take the female, run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. Test her in every, every, every way <laughs> because she is the most important factor for good economics. If she shows any sign of resistance in submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bullwhip on her to extract the last bit of bitch out of her. Black women got attitudes and I'm gonna have to beat it out of you if you don't wanna submit to, be, to being a slave. So this is where black women with attitudes came from, very clearly. Take care not to kill her, for in doing so, you spoil good economics. She can't make no more babies, and she can't work for us. When in complete submission, she will train her offspring in the early years to submit to labor when they become of age. Understanding is the best thing. Therefore, we shall go deeper into this area of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this breaking process of the female nigger. Let me tell y'all, I probably won't say nigger no more after this because I ain't got no problem calling a nigga a nigga. Like, with my friends, you know, with myself, my homies, black, white, red, yellow, I don't care, nigga ain't a color to me no more. But I done said it so much reading this book, like, I, I can't, it makes my stomach hurt every time I say it. 
reading this book and I think that's the energy of it <laughs> is why but anyway just a little personal thing going on uh we have reversed the relationships in her natural uncivilized state she would have a strong so uncivilized meaning in her natural not a slave state she would have a limited protective tendency toward her independent male offspring and would raise the female offspring to be dependent like her. So in other words, she would raise her male to be strong and independent, whereas she would raise her females to be dependent. Nature had provided for this type of balance. We reverse nature by burning and pulling one civilized inward apart and bull whipping the other to the point of death in her presence. By her being left alone unprotected with the male image destroyed, the ordeal caused her to move from her psychological dependent state to a frozen independent state. In this frozen psychological state of independence, she will raise her male and female offspring in reverse roles. For fear of the young male's life, she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak, independent, but physically strong. Because she has become psychologically independent, she will train her female offsprings to be psychologically independent. What have you got? You got the, you got the nigger woman out front and the man behind and scared. This is a perfect situation for sound sleep and economics. finish before the breaking process we had to be alertly on guard at all times now we can sleep soundly for out of frozen fear his woman stands guard for us he cannot get past her infant slave he is a good tool now ready to be tied to the horse at a tender age by the time a nigger boy reaches the age of 16 he is soundly broken in and ready for life's sound and efficient work in the reproduction of a unit of good labor force. Continually, though, the breaking of uncivilized savage niggers by throwing the new female savage into a frozen psychological state of independency, by killing, all, by killing of the protective male image, by creating a submissive, dependent mind of the nigger male savage, we have created an orbiting cycle that turns in its own access forever. Unless a phenomenon occurs and reshifts the position of the female savage. We show what we mean by example. Take the case of the two economic slave unit, units and examine them closely. The two economic slave units mean male and female. We ain't even male or female no more. We are economic units. We are two economic units. And since there's only a male and a female, I guess it's not difficult for you to figure it out when they say you need to protect your two economic units. Woo-wee! So, what do we got here? Um, I need a beverage. Hold on. That was a lot. I need a sip. Or not, because... I didn't have a bottle opener, so that'll sit there. I thought that was a twist off cap. Psych. So, in the breaking process of the African woman, and let me tell y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this and comprehending it at the same time. I haven't read this since last summer. Um, and I, I don't remember these things. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming up with this stuff as I read with y'all because it's a discussion and I, I don't have to have a lesson planned, but, uh, I'm gonna continue to talk to myself. Maybe uh, y'all will join me eventually in talking. So the male was broken like a horse and the female had a little bit more respect and at least was given the opportunity not to get beat and walk on into slavery. Uh, and that's probably, like I said the last time, how Rosa Parks was able to slide on in and then help everybody slide on out because she was apparently intelligent. It was like, okay, I see what's happening. I'm going to be real cute, and I'm going to walk my way into slavery, and then I'm going to take notes on how to get us the hell up out of here. Uh, because, you know, 
our natural instinct to be submissive can be a good weapon, <laughs> as you see. And um, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say Rosa Parks. Mm, wrong person. Uh, my Moses. Uh, so... Before the breaking process, we had to be alertly on guard at all times. And what that meant was because there was still fighting us. Women were still bitches. And the black men were still uncivilized niggas. So since we weren't exactly slaves yet and we still had fight and we still had independence and our natural inclinations, you couldn't really sleep too well because you knew that somebody was probably going to try to come get you in your sleep. So that right there ought to let you know you're doing something wrong when somebody want to kill you for the way they treating you. But for some reason, that bail never went off and they continued to go for slavery. But once we get this in them, we can sleep soundly forever. <laughs> because the female will now be our guards because she too scared to do anything else. Because at the time of the breaking of the slave, the, the black family unit, how beautiful was so strong, the woman couldn't imagine at the time being without her husband. You know, like we used to have that y'all, but this was broken out of us. How many weddings do you see in our community? My white girlfriends, they be nauseous with going to weddings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, damn, you went to another wedding? I'd be tired of not being able to go out with them because they be going to so many weddings. I'm just like, how many weddings? That's not something part of our culture anymore. So these things were bred out of our culture. Our, our family unit was purposely taken apart. And black women made so independent, they no longer thought they needed black men. And you're raising weak men. Do you hear that? He is telling you that you are raising weak men so you can hand them over to corporate America and not be bosses, not own a job. You're teaching them to go get a job. You're not teaching them to go be an entrepreneur, go open a business. You're teaching them to go be a good worker. Teaching them to be soft. I don't mean this type of soft. Soft. Continually through the breaking of uncivilized savage niggas by throwing the nigga female savage into psychological state of a frozen independency because we are without our, our strong, and I know some of y'all with the patriarchal stuff, but let's put all of that to the side for now because we're talking about this book. But that is what happened to the family structure. By removing the black male, you made the female have to be independent and then raise a weak-minded male because I ain't no man. Okay, so you know what? Take it all away real, real, real. I have sons. I'm a strong black woman. Ain't nobody ever going to deny that. You ain't going to find nobody that going to say, yeah, ain't no strong black woman. I'm a strong black woman on every single level. I can't raise, I used to always think that a strong black woman can raise a strong black man. You cannot. A strong black man has to be led and built by another strong black man. Not any man that's just present in his life and he there every day. I said a strong black man. I have I currently have a teenage son and we, cause he about to be 15, you know, and he think he a man and he the man of the house. And it's just like, I gotta be the disciplinarian. I gotta be the teacher. I gotta be the this and the that. And I had to just tell him the other day, I'm like, listen, I, I'm sorry that I, I always sound like I'm a bitchin' female, but take out <laughs> take out the bitchin' female or the the you know the nagging mom and understand I'm giving you the tools to be a strong black man because unfortunately there there aren't any you can mimic. You know, and what I mean by a strong black man is one that had a strong foundation under him or at least handled his traumas. 
so that he can be a strong black man. But unfortunately, that's that's not present. There aren't any, you know, it's COVID. There aren't any BAM programs, Becoming a Man. You know, I, I really like that program. Or there aren't any of these mentoring, uh, was it Simba's or um, Safe in My Brother's Arms is what that's called. I should find out. But anyway, there's no male mentoring program. So I'm, I'm left trying to teach a black man how to be a black man. And a strong black woman, no matter how strong I am, you see my queens and I'm sitting in my power, my power chair, my queen corner. You can't raise a strong black man. And so that's the conversation. I'm glad I have a, a child I can have logical conversations with. And he's my child, so he's very socially, emotionally developed, um, which is a plus and a minus for me. Uh, but I'm glad we can have a conversation where once I get done yelling and beating on him verbally, I can be like, listen, this ain't about me being your mama. I'm trying to raise a man. I'm not raising my boyfriend. I'm not raising a boy. I'm raising a future man, a future provider, a future husband, father, possibly. I'm just trying to raise a good man. And so I have to explain these things to him because it takes a strong black man to raise another strong black man. And I really learned that by having sons. So this right here, as you can see, I'm stuck. <laughs> you know, I'm so stuck on how removing the black man out of the house was detrimental to the rest of our, our existence and putting the female in the mind of frozen independence. Woo! That's, 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 a, that's a topic all on its own. That's wow. I love that statement, frozen independence. Um, so da 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 da. So yeah, that's that's that. I mean, I I mean that was a really short chapter. Um, I've talked to myself all that I can talk to myself about that. Um, hey lady, oh you did say hi. Hey Chelsea. Um, yeah. It's, it's just amazing to me that this was written 309 years ago. And people think the system is broke. This is the manual for the system. So if the system has a manual, then it, it's not broken. It wasn't mistaken. It was very purposeful, which means if we're going to change it, we have to be more purposeful and intentional because it's not broken. Slavery ended long enough ago where this shouldn't still be going on. But he said if it's done correctly, it can last thousands of years. He said only a couple hundred. But if done correctly... Definitely we could do it for a few hundred years. But if done correctly, we'll keep doing it ourselves for a thousand years and we can sleep good at night while collecting money. <laughs> that's the that's the last line I read, ain't it? <laughs> so, oh, the Negro marriage unit. Yeah, that's next week. Right, let me just tell you what's next next week. The Negro marriage unit is what's next. And I was just telling you how breaking apart the family unit and, and marriages. <sighs> so we all have our work to do. Of course, the pawns of the game, the ones that look like me, have the most work to do. But that takes an amount of accountability that, um, unfortunately, the fragility of our community and the, the trauma and the hurt is so deep that that accountability is very difficult. So... I'm here to work on that. And, uh, yeah, if you can learn that, accountability in any part of your life, in this racial work, in your relationship with your boo, you know what I'm saying, at your job, with yourself, accountability with yourself, you know, is very important. Internal racism, like I said, let me re re rewind and remind what that is. Internal racism, and that's not a black or white thing. Everybody got their own internalized racism problems. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 anybody that wishes to not be their color, that's an internal racism problem you got. 
okay? However, it don't matter how it was put there. Like, um, you know, if you were dark-skinned, you were made fun of, and so now you don't want to be dark skin. That's internalized racism. And internalized racism, ri- racism is stuff that black people perpetuate on each other. Like I said, about the hair color, uh, about the... Um, brand of your clothes, where you live, the car you drive, even the high school you go to, the school you go to, uh, it, it could be as petty as what your parents do, like, if you got something to do with that, you know, so the internalized racism is the things that you do to yourselves, that you, you put, that you keep inside of yourself, um, and the internalized privilege or the privileged racism is that that you inherited. I mean, it's not your fault. You were white. You were born that way. But if you don't understand how your being white is helping you along and holding other people back, then unfortunately for you, that's also internalized racism. But if you start to do the work, then, you know, cool, do the work. Don't just say uh, black lives matter and you ain't got one black friend, you know, you're not even trying to make your circle uh, more diverse, right? You have a company and you don't even look to hire outside of your circle. Uh, you want to come to Inglewood. Sorry, I was trying to see what the snow is doing. <laughs> you want to come to Inglewood and buy property because it's cheap and it's a beautiful old house. And then you make it not affordable for the original people that live here. You buy up the whole block, and now the whole block is not affordable. And that's what gentrification is. You can let us gentrify our own neighborhoods. If My favorite example is if you're a developer. If you're a developer, come buy a building. Come buy a house. Fix it up. Make it nice. And give it to somebody like me who is responsible, who's going to take good care of your stuff. Or, you know, how about sell it to me? Because they're going to give it to you quicker and cheaper than they will me, maybe. And so if that's the case, and you're really trying to balance out the system, then you go get the dollar lot because you actually are the one that own that house in the neighborhood that I live in. And I want this dollar lot right here, but I don't own property, so I can't buy the dollar lot. So you go buy it and then sell it to me. That's how you can use your power. There's all different ways to use your position if you want to change the system. You just need to know how. And I got that. And I'm here for that. Because, again, it is not the system that is broke. It is the pawns that need to change and force the system to be what we need it to be. And this is a good time for it. Yep, I'm excited. This is a good time for it. Yep, 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 yep. So, all right, I got to get ready for yoga because you definitely need the woo-saha after something like this. So join me at 8 o'clock, back right here, um, for some yoga, the hippie style, which starts with a little dance because you definitely need to shake all of that stress loose. Uh, I mean, it's not stress, but this is an intense talk. Not for me, I'm excited. But for some people out there, that might have been a little too intense, um, but, yeah, so I'm gonna go do some yoga, join me back here at 8 o'clock, gotta hurry up, so I can get something to drink and change clothes, all right, thank y'all, oh, and then, yes, of course, join me next week, so that we can talk about the black unit of, um, excuse me, black marriage unit, and see how that disruption is perpetuated in the systematic slavery, and in the black community in general, I love all y'all, black, red, yellow, green, blue, it don't matter. I love you all because um, I'm all of y'all. <laughs> I am. At this point, ain't nobody 100% nothing. So we all need to just go on ahead, love each other, and don't worry about no colors. Because that's where it should be anyway, right? It's all it is is a skin color. Everybody need to cut it out. All right. I don't know how to end that one. I'll get to that in a minute. This one already quit on me. I must have said something because that was almost to the end. We're going to get at the four stars. And. Boop.